Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Morning Dew, daily events worldwide. And we are on November 1st, 2021. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet and welcome to a chilly November already and as well an active sun. Looking at the last seven days, Alaska 2, quick vision of what we've been going through here the last few days as we were and did get a, a glancing blow, I would say, from that X-class solar flare that erupted on the 28th, right there. Now, it looks like it may have glanced our planet in the southern hemisphere. Southern hemisphere auroras were a lot stronger than the northern hemisphere during the event. Looking at the last 48 hours on the sun, 304 angstroms, we're looking at four Earth-facing sunspots, one moving into an equatorial region. Looking at the last 48 hours incoming, we do have a CME in as well. Look at that large plasma tornado erecting from the surface of the sun. A little Earth to scale there as well. Looking at outgoing. There's that large sunspot that released the X-class solar flare. It is now departing, and as well we had a small CME shoot out in a departing position as well. Closer look here at the plasma tornado filament. Plasma filament that seems to be dancing across the northwestern parts of the sun and has been for the past 48 hours since it connected with that bright fiery region. We have now seen two CMEs over the past 48 hours. Looking at the multi-spectrum here. Now a lot of people were expecting a catastrophic event. It was only an X-class flare, but this was an Earth-facing event it's interesting to see how it affects our planet. No Earth-facing coronal holes. Looking at the ISWA spiral, you can see the CME that ejected from the sun. B-class solar flare. Coronal mass ejection involved. Looking at our geospace magnetosphere, cut planes for pressure over the past four hours. And we were under a lot of pressure earlier, and we did see some sizable earthquakes, increase in solar winds, in which we are already seeing now, sitting at about 456 kilometers per second. And as well, look at our north-south polarities jumping all over the place. This could still be some effects from the X-class solar flare, or maybe it was the C-class solar flare. Just in the past few hours, we did see a B-class and a C-class. Looking at the X-ray solar flux. Our planet is still being charged up. Schumann resonance for today saw quite a spike. Look at that over the last few hours. Cosmic energies are invading. Looking at an amplitude power of 41, quality of 18. Now, earthquakes the last 24 hours, it's been busy. We're sitting over 270 earthquakes, according to USGS, across the USGS map. Starting out here with the largest this morning, 6.0 in Cinnabung, Cinnabang, oh, sorry, Indonesia, and as well followed by a 4.9 and a 4.6. 4.4 here, just northwest of Krakatoa in Bengkulu, Indonesia, 35 kilometer depth. Quiet through Jakarta. 4.5 here in Tabilo, Indonesia, 222 kilometer depth. 4.4 here in Papua New Guinea. And then we did have some deep earthquakes through Fiji Islands, sizable 5.1 there, Vanuatu. But look at this 4.5, 517 kilometer depth. And as well, 4.5, 575 kilometer depth. That was reported last night. 
Tonga region, definitely seeing some deep action. Back to the regular activity for the region, it seems. We were going through quite a lull there for about 24 hours, awaiting all of the space weather. Hawaii seeing a 3.0 for the largest last 24 hours. 4.2 here in Japan, 90 kilometer depth. 4.4 in Russia, 175 kilometer depth. 3.8, Chignac, Alaska, 15 kilometer depth. We're seeing that activity come to the region. Three low pressure systems affecting the region right now and a lot of snow. Mostly minor activity, but we did see a 5.3 there last night. Puerto Rico, or sorry, Oregon here with a 3.8. And as well, Ute Park, New Mexico, seeing a sizable 4.5 and a 3.2. Other than that, pretty quiet across North America. Most of the action was in Central, in the Caribbean plate. Central America, 5.0 there. In Guatemala, as well. The Valley, Anguilla, 5.0 ringing off. East of the Dominican Republic. Moving down into the Caribbean plate subduction zone. South America, seeing 4.0 here. Chile. And as well, Illapel, Chile, 4.0. And a 6.0 South Sandwich Island re Islands region. That was reported this morning at the same time as the Cinnabang. And that was just about 200 miles east of the Michael Volcano and Saunders Island. 4.6 there in China. But there are many earthquakes not reported here on USGS that are going on in China right now. I'll show you in just a moment gonna have a quick look here the last seven days reported here usgs quiet across the north american plate eerily quiet and now that we've seen these deep earthquakes through the fiji region we can expect larger shallower earthquakes to follow quick look at our planet for the last seven days for earthquakes it's amazing sometimes if you ever if this is the first time you've seen it I appreciate you watching and tuning in to Morning Dew. Wanted to show you here, Volcano Discovery, the most recent earthquakes through La Palma. A lot of people asking for La Palma updates. They did see some minor activity off of the island as well. A sizable 4.5, or sorry, 4.6, two hours ago just reported. So still many, many rumbles going through La Palma. Again, thoughts and prayers to everybody being affected there. Villages are covered in ash. This is Volcano Discovery. They do show all of the earthquakes, a lot more earthquakes through Europe. They have a few of the earthquake sites together. ESMSC, EMSC is the major earthquake reporter here. Showing throughout China, northern China. 4.5s, 4.6 ringing off. North of Tibetan Plateau. Stay tuned for the volcanic activity report that will be coming tomorrow. Give you a full update on all of the active and erupting volcanoes across the planet, as well planetary positioning. Now the Pacific Disaster Center showing the most recent volcanoes getting updated. Looking at Fuego, Guatemala. Raventador in Ecuador, La Palma in Spain, Sangay in Ecuador, Sabancaya, Peru, Nevadas de Ruz, Colombia, Shevlich, Russia, Karamiski in Russia, Dokono, Indonesia, Ibu, Indonesia, Swiss and Ajima, Japan, Semis Napochnoi, United States, Era in Japan, and Semeru, Indonesia. And as well, there are many, many more that are active and erupting. These are just the most recently updated today through this Pacific Disaster Center app, which you can download yourself and get all of the active and current disasters occurring across the planet. One tropical storm to talk about, Tropical Storm Wanda, who has now been venturing through the Atlantic Ocean for about four days as a low pressure system, named two days ago. We've got quite a situation developing in the West Pacific as well. Watch for the forecast coming up real soon. Things are really starting to ramp up, and these systems are getting bigger. 
And this is something that I've been talking about for years. And I've been trying to warn everybody that these times are going to change. The volcanoes are going to be erupting. The systems are going to be getting bigger. More natural disasters will be occurring. And it's not due to climate change. This is due to something even much bigger. Climate cycle. Let's have a look at the five-day forecast brought to you by MeteorEarth and as well daily events worldwide. Looking here, home base, Ontario, as yeah, some pretty chilly nights here and as well a very windy and chilly day through Ontario. Those north winds are really coming through right now. Northwest, high pressure ridge building in. So it's going to be sunny here for the next few days, but it's going to be cold, hovering just above freezing. But through northeastern United States, watch for those temps to drop below freezing big low pressure system there it seems that all of the systems wrapped up together there over the hudson bay heading towards greenland in the long range forecast here overlooking the west coast still lots of rain heading into the area one two three systems affecting british columbia vancouver and straight northward along the coast much for heavy rains in some areas Coastal flooding will be some issues. And as well, some really cold temperatures moving in. And other than that, it's going to be pretty dry through the United States. High pressure ridge built in. Low pressure system developing here off the coast. Heading into the Atlantic. But then watch, there's going to be a big system here developing off the coast of the United States in the long range and we'll be heading right along the coastline. I'm not really sure where it's going to go after that, but definitely some big things are developing through the Atlantic and the Pacific right now. Tropical storm Wanda looks like it's going to just jog around the middle of the Atlantic for a few days. Overlooking Europe, low pressure system, big one. It's going to be sending waves of moisture throughout the week. And as well, watch for heavy snow in higher elevations. High pressure ridge will be building in behind it. But it's going to be a cold one as it's mixed with a low from Greenland. So watch for wintry conditions across eastern Europe. And as well, big high pressure ridge moving right down to China here this week. It's going to be a very cold week for this part of the world Big polar vortex moving in, and this is going to be swinging around eventually, folks. But we ain't seen nothing yet. Winter isn't even until December. Beginning of November, we still have tropical storms to worry about in the Atlantic, and typhoons to worry about in the Pacific, and cyclones to worry about across the Indian Ocean. Watch for heavy daily evaporation rains across most of equatorial regions and as well South India. Big low pressure system there off the coast developing through the Sea of Yemen. And then watching multiple systems here kind of trap themselves over the whole continent of Australia. Most of the continent will be seeing daily evaporation rains and colder conditions throughout parts of southeastern. High pressure ridge continues through New Zealand. And then here, what, what I was talking about over the Pacific, I've, I have not seen the maps act like this before. Very big and tight low pressure system there. Watching the convergence line, though, we could have some wave cyclones or wave typhoons developing here. I'm not sure what's going on. It's going to be an interesting long-range forecast. Stay tuned. Daily forecast, five-day forecast coming to you with the Daily Dew. As well, look at all these systems get wrapped up over parts of northern BC and Alaska. Low-pressure system hanging out through Argentina. And then another big one developing over Bolivia. Other than that, daily evaporation rains. And temperatures are staying average right now and seasonal. 
No major heat waves going on just yet. Overlooking Africa. Daily evaporation rains. No major systems affecting you either. And that is your five-day forecast. Looking at some pretty cool conditions, higher elevations across the planet right now. Collapsed magnetosphere much? Going to leave you here looking at the northern hemisphere versus the southern, pointing out the major systems that are spinning across our planet right now. And I want to thank you all for watching today. If you've made it this far in the video, don't forget to hit that like button. And much love to you for making it. Every day. Stay aware and prepared. God bless you all. Stay young and have fun. And get your morning due. Bye-bye now. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button, subscribe, share with your friends and family from across the world.